What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. Hi, right, folks. This is uh, Mr. Warmack, and I'm back in the building. I'm here to give you a video, and today we're going to talk about is the Roland Martin, uh, Omar Johnson interview he did on Radio 1. And Omar Johnson and I mean not Omar and the and the three other panelists that were on the panel. Uh I felt it was kind of a little disrespect on Roland Martin's part that uh he had two people who were who were tap dancing. He had one guy that wanted to commit but he couldn't, I understand in a way. Roland Martin, he played the tap dancer role himself. He had to get his top hat on and start tap dancing. So what I want to do is I want to show I want to show you guys the video. I want to watch you like, watch the whole video, and then what I want to do is I'm gonna come back and I want to chop it up and do. We're gonna I'm gonna show you what you need to be worried about, what you need to watch, because this could happen to you one day. So uh, let's get with the video here. Hold on. All right, folks. Dr. Umar Johnson recently was on. Uh, 105.1 FM out of New York, The Breakfast Club with DJ Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the God. During the interview, Johnson talked about a whole range of issues that led to him uh, being the talk of black Twitter last week. Uh, and a lot of people were questioning his educa educational credentials. Now, people ask me, what can we expect from a Donald Trump White House for black America? And the answer is real simple. You can expect exactly what you got from a Obama White House. Absolutely nothing. Black people know they're not American, but they will fight like hell to protect that identity because they don't want to be identified with who they really are, and that's being African. As long as you have a skill, you can always feed your family. But if all you got is college degrees, you might end up in an unemployment line. I'm a psychologist. Ain't too many black people running around looking for a psychologist to reveal all the skeletons in their closet. All right, folks, uh, joining us right now, Dr. Umar Johnson. Uh, welcome back to the show. Thank uh, you. First and foremost, um, uh, it, it was amazing looking at this whole reaction. I mean, I'm sitting mm -hmm. here, uh, you, uh, you know, again, people asking all kinds of questions. Things are blowing up. Uh, and so many people jumped on saying he's not a real doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, where did you graduate from and mm -hmm. you got your PhD? Mm -hmm. My undergraduate education was from Millersville University. Uh, three degrees, po political science, psychology, master's in school psychology. Subsequent to that, Pennsylvania certification as a school psychologist, which I've been for almost 20 years. After that, I got my educational leadership master's degree and principal certificate from Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And I earned my doctorate degree from the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, American Psychological Association approved program, one of the top psychology training programs on the East Coast. Six degrees in all, and anyone can lift up a telephone and call and verify those degrees. So when, when you see folks uh, who, who, who question uh, your degrees, your response? It's because my narrative is a whole lot different from the average mainstream black scholar. I don't parrot the narrative that the American social order wants black scholars to parrot. I tell the truth. I don't scratch unless I itch and I don't dance unless I like the music. And because they're not used to having someone with a traditional education positive non-traditional views, people will automatically start to question his credentials. How did he get this far believing what he believes in? Well, you have to play the spook who sat by the door. When I got accepted into those three universities, they didn't know what I believed in. They didn't know what I st stood for. But as time went on, it revealed itself. But I'm unapologetically African, so I'm not really concerned with what people think about me personally. Um, I have a job to do, and that is to awaken the sleeping consciousness of African people, not just in America, but all across the world. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, you said during the interview, you said that uh, Mandarin was one of the official languages in South Africa. Yes, sir. And others said you were dead wrong. Yes, because I didn't clarify that I was speaking of it being an official language in the public school system of South Africa. So I should have clarified that Mandarin is an official language in the Republic of South Africa's school system. <laughs> It's not an official language in the country, it's an official language in the school system. And I was speaking of schools, but I didn't clarify that, so that's my responsibility. Uh, also, uh, during that particular interview, uh, you, you talked about a, a variety of issues that also uh, got people uh, talking. One of them uh, dealt with your views on interracial marriage. Yes, sir. 
And so, uh, it, and, and so explain that for folks who did not hear it. Uh, certainly. Simply put, any black man who is with a woman who's not an African herself is going to have a difficult time getting respect from me. I believe black men need to be with black women. The black family is under attack. Only one out of every four black women gets married. The black woman is last likely to get married. She's the last married, the first divorced. We have, what, two-thirds of our children being raised by working class and impoverished single black female-led house homes. The destruction of a nation begins in the home of its families. And if we want to save black people, we have to save the black family. So, and in order to do that, black men have to commit themselves to black women. So, I'll, so when you talk about not getting your respect, so, which, so if that's the case, you're saying uh, send Barack Obama, to, excuse me, President Barack Obama to get your respect because his dad uh, married a white woman. Oh, not at all. Would, uh, would Harry Belafonte? Not at all. Would I want to be very clear about something. As Pan-Africanists, the product of an interracial union is an African. I have heroes who are biracial. Some of the grandfathers of Pan-Africanism were of mixed racial ancestry. You don't blame a child for how they got here. But I'm asking you this here. Harry Belafonte has a white wife. No respect for him? City it would be very, it doesn't city, matter. It city, doesn't matter your social status. So no, 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 I didn't say social status. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the one who put the work in. Right, but you put so, him so, out. No, 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 I'm asking you. So mm -hmm. Harry Belafonte. Yes, sir. Sidney Poitier, Julian Bond, Vernon Jordan. And you're say, naming all them to say what? No, these are all African-American men mm -hmm. who have Who married, have done some good things. No, who have married white women. But you said you, no, any, any black man who marries a white woman will not get your respect. Can I respond? Yeah, go ahead. And what I'm telling you is this. I don't care who you name. I don't care how much work you did for black people. Your greatest commitment to black people is being committed to a black woman. It is still a contradiction. No matter how much you think you did for the struggle, if you really were concerned with black people, you would commit yourself to a black woman. So it doesn't matter how successful they are. It doesn't matter how great you may claim them to be. At the end of the day, you didn't think enough about your own people to marry a woman who looks like you. Frederick Douglass. Yes, sir. An ancestor of mine. So when you say ancestor, what does that mean? Let me break it down. Because, again, some have said you tried to claim mm -hmm. that you are de a descendant of Frederick Douglass. Okay, so let's deal with that. So hold on one second. Here's a statement from the family. Uh, let me go ahead and read this, please. Um, the family of Frederick Douglass has received numerous in inquiries about Umar Johnson questioning his relationship to Frederick Douglass. There have also been questions about his legitimacy of his Ph.D. and the handling of the donations he's received for his school that he is promoting. We can tell you with 100 percent certainty that he is not a descendant of Frederick Douglass. With that being said, Mr. Johnson is very careful not to build himself as a descendant, but he doesn't correct people <coughs> when they refer to him in this way. He calls himself a blood relative, which is a nebulous reference designed to make people think he is a descendant. We have researched his explanation of being a blood relative to the great abolitionist. Some of the information he provides is accurate, but an extremely important piece of his explanation with regards to a documented relative of Frederick Douglass is false. The information he recites correctly is from the public record, so his knowledge of our family ancestry is far from definitive proof. Two things there. One, he's not a descendant of Frederick Douglass, okay? I would concur with that, all right? But then, too, you also heard that some of the things he says is correct. So the question becomes, he's either related or he's not, okay? So, now, are, you, so are you related? I'm about to answer your question okay. if you allow me to do that. I am a blood relative of Frederick Douglass. My name is on the family true. We have a family reunion every two years. What they're talking about, and I want to make sure you're clear, they're talking about whether or not I come through the loin of Frederick Douglass, which I do not, nor have I ever claimed, okay? I have more videos on YouTube than any other scholar. I speak around the world more than any other scholar. Show me where I've ever said I was a descendant. I've only claimed one thing, kinsman. How are my kinsmen? If you ever read any of the autobiographies of Frederick Douglass, he talks about growing up on Tuckahoe Creek with Cousin Stephen. Cousin Stephen is Stephen Bailey. Dr. Umar Johnson's four times great-grandfather, whose grave I just visited last week, I go every year. Okay, that's my four times great-grandfather. He married my four times great-grandmother, Caroline Wilson Bailey. From that union came my three times great-grandfather, George Washington Bailey, the first black public school teacher on Eastern Shore, Maryland. He married Grandmom Annie. They had Grandmom Caroline. Okay, she had Grandma Vivian. Grandma Vivian married a Spanish-speaking Cuban immigrant, Grandpa Cicero. They had Grandma Ida, who's still alive, who married James Johnson, who had my father Jamal, who married my mama Barbara, and from that union I was born. 
I am a blood of belly. I am not married in. What they're talking about is strictly descendancy, something I've never claimed. Am I a kin? Do I directly come from the loin of the first cousin and potentially have Frederick Douglass? And the reason I say potentially, the slave master who owned our family, a white man named Aaron Anthony, raped Frederick's mother and raped Stephen's mother, my ancestor. And there's significant evidence to suggest that. Some people could still argue, though, that they were not brothers because it's not conclusive. Fine, throw that out. I'm still a kinsman because I come through the blood of his first cousin. You talk about, again, respect. Do you respect... I don't talk about respect. No, I no, get no, tremendous no, respect no, from no, my no, people. No, I'm not talking about that. Um, do you respect Frederick Douglass? Obviously, yes. But he had a white wife. He did. So, I, I, that's what I'm trying to... I'm going to clarify. Why, why, why is that an issue? Why, I mean, why is that... If, if you put in the work mm -hmm. and you have the history... Who, who cares who you marry? I already answered that question, and I told you, I don't care how much work you put in. If you don't commit yourself to a black woman, ultimately, you wasn't totally committed to the struggle. Even Frederick Douglass. Even Frederick Douglass has to be criticized, as I did on The Breakfast Club. Now, it has to be put in context. He didn't marry the white woman until he was an old man. After his wife, Anna Murray Douglass, of 50 years, a blue-black chocolate woman through whom all my cousins were born, he was an old man when he did it, but nonetheless, he did it. And yes, he has to be criticized on that, because a black man needs to be with a black woman, and it is a conscious Contradiction. I don't care how much work you think you've done for black folks to not commit yourself to a black woman. Oh, tight one second. I got more questions when we come back. I would argue the reason black men marry white women is because they wish they were white themselves. And having the white man's pride, his queen, is a psychological symbol to myself that I am equal to him. We're back with Dr. Umar Johnson. Uh, in one of the, in that particular statement, uh, the family also addressed this here. Uh, you talked about taking over uh, the buildings or the land of a black of a black school that was shut down. Yes, HBCU sir. St. Paul's College. Uh, and you were raising money for it. First of all, yes, how sir. much money has been raised? And what well, St. Paul's has been sold. Approximately three to five months ago, I was told by the auction company in charge of the sale that it was been sold to a developer. So how much money was raised, what the people, people gave, all kinds of people gave, how much was raised and what's the status of that $700,000 and the status is we're still looking for a school and the status is my start date for FDMG will be 8-21-18 or if at all it may be delayed to 8-21-19 which is the anniversary of the Nat Turner War. We say looking for a school, why not start a charter school? I mean, you can start a school. Because charter schools are owned by the state and I'm a Pan-Africanist. I believe what is to be done for black people must be done by black people. Why do I want a charter school? So you want, so you want a private school? Exactly. Law Independent school. Lauren. Um, so the question of <laughs> interracial marriage, I yes, mean, come on, man. You're too smart for this. We got 43. Oh, right. I'm too smart for what? We got 43 million black people in this country. And that we got means over what? 190 million white people. You're gonna sit here and say that if you a, a black person, black a white person oh, get do. married, oh. a black person, a white person get married, one can't understand the other person's struggle. You've seen, it's not you've about seen Tim Wise, right? You've seen it's Reverend about Wallace. You've seen white people who understand racism Sist very well. That doesn't the mean they're gonna thing, do anything the other about thing it. The thing that is obviously well, true well, is they understand racism when you see things. Like the murder of Medgar Evers, like the murder and, of Martin Luther King, they understand and, racism. And just what fine. did they do they about it? They understand us gaining just fine, and that's why murder happened. Based right? on what? So the idea that somehow a white person can't understand our struggle? No I could way. care less what they understand. I'm no asking way. you, what have they done systematically he already to told improve you that. the opportunities he of white folks? He that. did not tell oh, me yes, that. Oh yes, you did tell. He tell did you not that. tell me that. You're going to tell me that guys like Tim Wise and Reverend Wallace don't understand what about race in Tim America? Wise? They don't understand race in America. He articulates racism. So what has he done? There are no white people that understand race in it. America. There's, there's not no a white, white person in America. There's no America. white people understand second, race in America. There's, there's not a white in, person. Them going to there's not a white person in America who has ever worked to systematically eliminate the white privilege that they benefit from vis-a-vis -vis your you, oppression. You're you lying. Know, Eugene, you know Eugene, 190 so, million so, people in America. Eugene. In so, uh, so, so, oh, 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 we're not going to go there. We're not. I, I have called me a liar, and you're cool. Well, it's a fact that watch you're lying. Watch how you talk it's to me. Watch how I talk it's to you. It's a fact that you're lying. It's a fact that you're lying. I understand you. To say that, to say that, to say that, no, everybody, one second. Several things I don't allow. I don't allow the N word. I don't allow coon. We can talk to one another and disagree, but I do not use racial epithets against and black that's people. That's fine, but he called no, me no, a liar. No, 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 no. So I, the language no, no. these Ra ra don't Racial epithets will not be used on this show. And that's fine. By anybody. But how we talk no, no, to each but, other. No, needs you to can be say whatever you want, but no racial epithets will be used on this show about black people to black people. Eugene, your question. So, from your paradigm, from your perspective, civil rights act 
isn't an act of, of white folk stepping up on behalf of black folk. Current criminal justice reform legislation moving isn't a current act of white folk stepping up on behalf of black folk. Folk that funded the civil rights movement in the, in the 1560s isn't an act of white folk stepping up on behalf of black folk. I'm sorry, as an American, because I define myself as an American, sure an African American. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I live in a country that moves forward together. And I say that as a Republican. We move mm -hmm. forward together. Yes, we have individual struggle. Yes, we have struggles. I'm not talking yes, about we have, yes, no, no, no. Yes, we We're have. We have systematic. We have systematic. We have okay. systematic. Okay. 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 Finish, finish, finish it. Right. Finish it. 15 seconds. The end. We have systematic struggles. And together as a country, move forward to defeat those struggles. Really? So, based on what you said, I want you to give me examples of white folk, not individuals, but systematically. Why can't they be individuals? Excuse me. Why can't they be individuals? One second, one second. I know you can't wait one to second finish. Answer, him, but but one finish. second answer. Can I finish? Go, go. Okay, I'm going. Okay? You cannot name anything systematically done ever in this country by white people to equal the playing field for black folks. The Civil Rights Act, Johnson? Congress Lyndon literally Johnson. sits behind oh, us. Hey, the way. Civil Rights yeah. Act, the Are Voting Rights aware? Act. Lyndon Are you Johnson. aware? Both of them. Are you Johnson? aware? Hey, can I Both of them. White people Second. are proud of you, son. Scott Bolden. Real quick. I, I think the, the terminology and the narrative being used is a little misleading, not from you, but from this dialogue right here. Okay. Um, you know, it's one thing to sympathize with the struggle, it's another one to be, to empathize with the struggle, very different. When you talk about marriage being a political choice, and that one of the things, arguments that you made that I tend to agree with is that that a if you don't marry a black woman then she can never support and comfort and value your day-to-day -day struggle as a black man uh, that being said uh, I do think that the the level of the rhetoric that you use in regard to your pan-africanism uh, is um, is is difficult for many of us quote in the mainstream to get our arms around but this issue about black men and white women in the civil rights struggle is not a new discussion my mother was a civil rights activist in mm -hmm. Chicago and she would often uh, complain privately that one you can't sleep black you can't sleep white and talk black Thank if you, you will and Thank that's you. always been in the American struggle American African Americans struggle with ourselves yes, the other thing is that we struggle with our own psychology about okay. self-love and okay. otherwise <laughs> and if we get our arms around that, that does make sense. Okay. But you would have to say that you know and, 190 and, million and, people. But you're being too dictatorial. You would have to claim that. Answer, one individuals second, don't matter. Question. You'd have to claim no, that. No, go ahead and respond. Go ahead. And I agree with, 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 with my brother's Scott. comments. Mm -hmm. Brother Scott, he brought up the Civil Rights Bill, but what he did not talk about in relation to the Civil Rights Bill is there were two words included in that bill that ultimately served to take away from black people what that bill was intended to deliver. They added gender and they added sexual orientation. And as a result of that, white women and homosexuals have been able to strip black America from the intended gains of the Civil Rights Act. So there was still racism in that bill if you will study that history. So Umar, your question was, did anyone, has anyone black ever systematically done I mean, no. has anyone white ever systematically Not done anything? Systematically, systematically. white America. So LBJ, LBJ. I want you that's to get, the government. No, I don't think you that's heard the question. That's a systematic move. No, you didn't hear the question. I, what I has, no, you fine. did not. No, yeah, you I did. didn't. Yeah, you're I did. so quick to defend white <laughs> yeah, folks that you're not listening. No, I'm not trying to I'll defend white folks. I literally have 45 seconds, so restate the question and give the answer. Okay. You got 45 right, seconds. Let's get an answer. The question was, mm -hmm. what has white America done? Right. Not individuals. <laughs> systematically, not individuals. can I, you Why won't even let me finish. Yeah, because you're you, that in love you with white folks. You, you won't even let me finish. Point on finish, finish, literally three times. Twenty seconds. Three times. <laughs> there is no bigger Go. system than the U.S. Twenty seconds, I'll finish. The Go. US and in twenty seconds, I would say that the panel that you have here, <laughs> who are extremely intelligent, do mm. not represent the everyday black man and woman struggles, and then because of that, they can articulate. And you represent forty-three million people right, in this country. Uh, I don't think so. Don't appreciate that. Don't days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. No. Hell no. no. That ain't no cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One. All right, now, since that's done, just think about what's going on on the video. I want you to just think about what was actually being said. So now we're getting to the part where we're going to critique uh, what, was, what was said. <laughs> so, uh, 
And this, we're going to start it over from the beginning. I'm going to stop it in certain instances, and then I'll explain. But like I said, I think he, he kind of got set up, but, you know, he, he I think he knew it because he's been getting set up by interviews, so he's prepared for it. So he got he got all sorts of credentials. He, he, he can handle it, so let's go in. Folks, Dr. Umar Johnson recently was on uh, 105.1 FM out of New York, The Breakfast Club, with DJ Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the God. During the interview, Johnson talked about a whole range of issues that led to him uh, being the talk of black Twitter last week, uh, and a lot of people were questioning his educa educational credentials. Now, people ask me, what can we expect from a Donald Trump White House for black America? And the answer is real simple. You can expect exactly what you got from a Obama White House, absolutely nothing. Black people know they're not American, but they will fight like hell to protect that identity because they don't want to be identified with who they really are, and that's being African. As long as you have a skill, you can always feed your family. But if all you got is college degrees, you might end up in an unemployment line. I'm a psychologist. Ain't too many black people running around looking for a psychologist to reveal all the skeletons in their closet. All right, folks, uh, joining us right now, Dr. Umar Johnson. Uh, welcome back to the show. Thank uh, you. First and foremost, um, uh, it, it was amazing looking at this whole reaction. I mean, I'm sitting mm -hmm. here, uh, you, uh, you know, again, people asking all kinds of questions, things are blowing up. Uh, and so many people jumped on saying he's not a real doctor. Okay, folks. Now, here's what they do right here. Whenever you, you heard him when he gave us, when he spoke up. Whenever, especially a black person, whenever a person like this, especially a black person, speaks on things that they never heard or something that it sounds, maybe to them, sounds so extreme, the first thing they want to do is they want to question his legit legitimacy. Now, mind you, they're saying they're questioning if he's a doctor. I don't care if you got your sheepskin from the South, South New Hampshire University that's on TV. Or if you got your sheepskin from Back Creek U, the fact is you have that sheepskin, and as long as you're qualified for that, there should be no speculation. I can see if he was running a, a, a game and maybe uh, he never went to school and called himself a doctor, but that's not the case. As long as he has that sheepskin, and he's qualified, and he can he can do that. He can do that. The fact is, we're not used to hearing our doctors talk. To, well, we're not used to hear professionals talk like that because they're they're stuck in their little um, box they're in where they can't do that if they're on a normal nine to five or a normal or a normal profession. But since he's talking outside of the box, we're we're questioning his credentials because wait a minute, how do you get a degree and you talk like that? That's where I have a problem with that coming in. The man is smart. If he has his degrees, he has his degrees. Let's go further in this video, see what uh, more hijinks Roland has for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, where did you graduate from and mm -hmm. you got your PhD? Mm -hmm. My undergraduate education was from Millersville University. Uh, three degrees, po political science, psychology, master's in school psychology. Subsequent to that, Pennsylvania certification as a school psychologist, which I've been for almost 20 years. After that, I got my educational leadership master's degree and principal certificate from Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And I earned my doctorate degree from the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, American Psychological Association approved program, one of the top psychology training programs on the East Coast. Six degrees in all, and anyone can lift up a telephone and call and verify those degrees. So when, when you see folks uh, who, who, who question uh, your degrees, your response? It's because my narrative is a whole lot different from the average mainstream black scholar. I don't parrot the narrative that the American social order wants black scholars to parrot. I tell the truth. I don't scratch unless I itch and I don't dance unless I like the music. And because they're not used to having someone with a traditional education positive non-traditional views, people will automatically start to question his credentials. How did he get this far believing what he believes in? Well, you have to play the spook who sat by the door. When I got accepted into those three universities, they didn't know what I believed in. They didn't know what I st stood for. But as time went on, it revealed itself. But 
I'm unapologetically African, so I'm not really concerned with what people think about me personally. Um, I have a job to do, and that is to awaken the sleeping consciousness of African people, not just in America, but all across the world. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, you said during the interview, you said that uh, Mandarin was one of the official languages in South Africa. Yes, sir. And others said you were dead wrong. Yes, because I didn't clarify that I was speaking of it being an official language in the public school system of South Africa. So I should have clarified that Mandarin is an official language in the Republic of South Africa's school system. <laughs> It's not an official language in the country, it's an official language in the school system. And I was speaking of schools, but I didn't clarify that, so that's my responsibility. See, at this point, right now, Roland is reaching. He's saying about the Mandarin, which is Chinese language, which is one of the hardest languages to learn in the world, that he said Mandarin was an official language of South Africa. Well, you and I know that Mandarin is not one of the official languages in South Africa, and he's a doctor, so he clearly made a mistake. And he, he corrected it here. But this goes to show this goes to show you that what they're doing is they're they're, they're like fetching for they're throwing they're throwing their, their, you know how people who start fishing they just throw their, their their rod in the water and just hope something hope just for something to bite. That was that's what it sounds like. It seems like he's doing right now. He's just throwing it in the water, hoping that he's gonna bite and have some excuse. So, so Roland can look for an, an aha moment. You know what I mean? So I'm like, aha, we got you. And then go in on him. But like I said, they do this. People who understand that he's not. This, Dr. Umar Johnson is not the first person they do this to. They will do it to you. They will do it to myself. So pay attention to this video because you'll see the tricks that he's learned from the liberal media. Like I said, any black person or any person in general that has a, it's a scholar that speaks off the norm. They're gonna try to they're gonna try to get you on any little thing they can that, that, that discredit you. And then once it did, once they have that, they're gonna just snowballs from from the, from the top to the bottom. It's just like a big snow, like going down a mountain. They're gonna look for any little thing to pick you apart. And if you give it to them, make sure you correct yourself. So we're gonna go back to the video at hand. Uh, also, uh, during that particular interview, uh, you, you talked about a, a variety of issues that also uh, got people uh, talking. One of them uh, dealt with your views on interracial marriage. Yes, sir. And so, uh, it, and, and so explain that for folks who did not hear it. Uh, certainly. Simply put, any black man who is with a woman who's not an African herself is going to have a difficult time getting respect from me. I believe black men need to be with black women. The black family is under attack. Only one out of every four black women gets married. The black woman is last likely to get married. She's the last married, the first divorced. We have, what, two-thirds of our children being raised by working class and impoverished single black female-led house homes. The destruction of a nation begins in the home of its families. And if we want to save black people, we have to save the black family. So and in order to do that, black men have to commit themselves to black women. So Okay, now that exchange, you see about Roland didn't have the courage to out front ask any tough question on this, but he tried to. He wanted Omar to give the narrative or what happened or his his reasonings for what he said, and he get Doctor Johnson did. But um, I still feel Roland's looking for anything, and I understand what Doctor Johnson is saying. Which when you when people understand this, when you go on shows like these, you have to have stats that are legit stats that back you up. You wanna know why? Because these guys will look this up and use it against you. It might not be now if the stat wasn't true. Maybe down the road in the end of the show, they might say, Well, here's a stat you were wrong on and so forth and so forth. And that goes back to prove my other point was about they're looking for something to pick you apart on. With the way he explained it, and then he gives he gives you the stats to say, "Hey, look, this can be looked up." They ain't gonna do that. <laughs> they're gonna sit there like, "All right, next question." But like I said, if you come, you gotta come with you gotta come correct here. You gotta you can't be on the old bozo thing. You can't you can't only be one of these loud talking blacks that you're on loud talk and get over because those days are over with. So let's continue. 
uh, so when you talk about not getting your respect, so which so if that's the case, you're saying uh, send Barack Obama, to, excuse me, President Barack Obama to get your respect because his dad uh, married a white woman. Oh, not at all. Would uh, wow. uh, would Harry Belafonte? Not at all. Let's I want to be it. very clear about something. As Pan Africanists, the product of an interracial union is an African. I have heroes who are biracial. Some of the grandfathers of Pan-Africanism were of mixed racial ancestry. You don't blame a child for how they got here. But I'm asking you this here. Harry Belafonte has a white wife. No respect for him? Sydney it would Pawnee, be very, it doesn't Sydney, matter. It Sydney, doesn't matter your social status. No, 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 I didn't say social I'm, I'm, I'm talking about one who put the work right, in. Right, but you put so, him so, out. No, 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 I'm asking you. So mm -hmm. Harry Belafonte. Yes, sir. Sidney Poitier, Julian Bond, Vernon Jordan. And you're saying, naming all them to say what? No, these are all African-American mm -hmm. men. Who have, who have done some good things? No, who married white women? But you said you no, any any black man who marries a white woman will not get your respect. Can I respond? Yeah, go ahead. And what I'm telling you is this: I don't care who you name, I don't care how much work you did for black people. Your greatest commitment to black people is being committed to a black woman. It is still a contradiction. No matter how much you think you did for the struggle, if you really were concerned with black people, you would have committed yourself to a black woman. So it doesn't matter how successful they are. It doesn't matter how great you may claim them to be. At the end of the day, you didn't think enough about your own people to marry a woman who looks like... Now, during this exchange, I agree 100%. Look, I'm not telling you can't have being in a racial relationship. I have many white friends that love in racial relationships with black women and other sorts. I know black men that are in other racial relationships. But the point being made, and my, a lot of my white friends understand what I'm talking about because like, we talk about this all the time. You can't have pride in your own race and then tell me I'm going to marry an Asian chick because you know we just fell in love. No, if you're telling me that you have... have so much pride in your race, you would stick to your race. Just because just, just because you protest and you, you do your little shuffle foot, that doesn't change the fact that you, you weren't built enough to, to marry something you're proud of. You're not too proud, you know, to be to bring them around other people, but you'll march, but you weren't proud enough to bring her in your own bed to give her your last name to have kids to them. Just a common fact of life. A lot of my friends agree with this. You can't say you have Irish pride and bring home a Russian chick. It's just common sense. I don't know where you people get these ideas. I, I, I totally agree with them. Thank you. Frederick Douglass. Yes, sir. An ancestor of mine. So when you say ancestor, what does that mean? Well, let me break it down. Because, again, some have said you tried to claim mm -hmm. that you are de a descendant of Frederick Douglass. Okay, so let's deal with that. So hold on one second. Here's a statement from the family. Uh, let me go ahead and read this, please. Um, the family of Frederick Douglass has received numerous in inquiries about Umar Johnson questioning his relationship to Frederick Douglass. There have also been questions about his legitimacy of his PhD and the handling of the donations he's received for his school that he is promoting. We can tell you with 100% certainty that he is not a descendant of Frederick Douglass. With that being said, Mr. Johnson is very careful not to build himself as a descendant, but he doesn't correct people when they refer to him in this way. He calls himself a blood relative, which is a nebulous reference designed to make people think he is a descendant. We have researched his explanation of being a blood relative to the great abolitionist. Some of the information he provides is accurate, but an extremely important piece of his explanation with regards to a documented relative of Frederick Douglass is false. The information he recites correctly is from the public record, so his knowledge of our family ancestry is far from definitive proof. Two things there. One, he's not a descendant of Frederick Douglass, okay? I would concur with that, all right? But then, two, you also heard that some of the things he says is correct. So the question becomes, he's either related or he's not, okay? So, now, are, you, so are you related? I'm about to answer your question okay. if you allow me to do that. I am a blood relative of Frederick Douglass. My name is on the family true. We have a family reunion every two years. What they're talking about, and I want to make sure you're clear, they're talking about whether or not I come through the loin of Frederick Douglass, which I do not, nor have I ever claimed, okay? I have more videos on YouTube than any other scholar. I speak around the world more than any other scholar. Show me where I've ever said I was a descendant. I've only claimed one thing, kinsmen. How am I kinsmen? If you ever read any of the autobiographies of Frederick Douglass, he talks about growing up on Tuckahoe Creek with Cousin Stephen. Cousin Stephen is Stephen Bailey. 
Dr. Umar Johnson's four times great grandfather, whose grave I just visited last week. I go every year. Okay, that's my four times great grandfather. He married my four times great grandmother, Caroline Wilson Bailey. From that union came my three times great grandfather, George Washington Bailey, the first black public school teacher on Eastern Shore, Maryland. He married Grandmom Annie. They had Grandmom Caroline. Okay, she had Grandma Vivian. Grandma Vivian married a Spanish speaking Cuban immigrant, Grandpa Cicero. They had Grandma Ida, who's still alive, who married James Johnson, who had my father Jamal, who married my mama Barbara, and from that union I was born. I am a blood of belly, I am not married in. What they're talking about is strictly descendancy, something I've never claimed. Am I akin? Do I directly come from the loin of the first cousin and potentially have? Frederick Douglass. And the reason I say potentially, the slave master who owned our family, a white man named Aaron Anthony, raped Frederick's mother and raped Stephen's mother, my ancestor. S and there's significant evidence to suggest that. Some people could still argue, though, that they were not brothers because it's not conclusive. Fine, throw that out. I'm still a kinsman because I come through the blood of his first cousin. You talk about, again, respect. You respect. I don't talk about respect. No, I get no, no, tremendous no, respect no, from no, my no, people. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. Um, do you respect Frederick Douglass? Obviously, yes. But he had a white wife. He did. So I, I, that's what I'm trying to. I'm gonna clarify. Why, why? Why is that an issue? Why? I mean, why is that? If if you put in the work mm -hmm. and you have the history, who who cares who you marry? I already answered that question, and I told you I don't care how much work you put in. If you don't commit yourself to a black woman, ultimately you wasn't totally committed to the struggle. Even Frederick Douglass. Even Frederick Douglass has to be criticized, as I did on the Breakfast Club. Now it has to be put in context. He didn't marry the white woman until he was an old man after his wife, Anna Murray Douglas, of 50 years, a blue-black chocolate woman through whom all my cousins were born. He was an old man when he did it, but nonetheless, he did it. And yes, he has to be criticized on that because a black man needs to be with a black woman. And it is a contradiction. I don't care how much work you think you've done for black folks to not commit yourself to a black woman. Now, as far as this, uh, back at you, as far as this, um, Frederick Douglass fiasco, number one, See, this is why black folks, these his his other side, basically they're all family, no matter how you look at it. That's that's like saying, my dad, if if I'm a descendant of my uncle, where in my first cousins and all that, I'm not a, a direct descendant, but I'm related to them. I mean, I don't know what he's. Roland Martin is really reaching, and like I said, people, this is where I'm telling you. When you go on there, you have to do your own research. You have to make sure all your bases are covered. You're like they read your biography. They read. They look at the stuff you've done in the past. They 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 watch all your previous videos. These people are on point. So when he's putting him in check, I was loving this because he was trying to get him to come up with some new information that he just found out like today or something. But the fact remain is, Doctor Johnson knew his stuff. Dr. Johnson came, like I said, Dr. Johnson came prepared, and there's not much you can say about that. I, I have to give him credit where credit is due. Like I said, you have to be prepared to, get, to, to take the fire from your own kind, unfortunately. Roland Martin is no better. He just thinks he has a bigger platform. But yes, he's, he may not be a direct descendant, but at the same time, he's probably a blood relative. So, and I don't know why some of his relatives are getting all bent out of shape over that. I don't know, man. It's, just, it's weird. Oh, tight one second. I got more questions when we come back. I would argue the reason black men marry white women is because they wish they were white themselves. And having the white man's pride, his queen, is a psychological symbol to myself that I am equal to him. We're back with Dr. Umar Johnson. Uh, in one of the, in that particular statement, uh, the family also addressed this here. Uh, you talked about taking over uh, the buildings or the land of a black of a black school that was shut down. Yes, HBCU sir. St. Paul's College. Uh, and you were raising money for it. First of all, yes, how much money has been raised? And what well, St. Paul's has been sold. Approximately three to five months ago, I was told by the auction company in charge of the sale that it was been sold to a developer. So how much money was raised, what the people, people gave, all kind of people gave, how much was raised and what's the status of that? $700,000 and the status is we're still looking for a school and the status is my start date for FDMG will be 821, 18, 
or if at all it may be delayed to 821-19, which is the anniversary of the Nat Turner War. We say looking for a school, why not start a charter school? I mean, you can start a school. Because charter schools are owned by the state, and I'm a Pan-Africanist. I believe what is to be done for black people must be done by black people. Why do I want a charter school? So you want, so you want a private school? Exactly. Law Independent school. Lauren. Um, so the question of <laughs> interracial marriage, I yes, mean, come on, man. You're too smart for this. We got Wait, hold it. Stop, 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 stop. This is the part I was telling you about. Here's, uh, here's the three panelists. The dude on the right's a Democrat. The two on the right, I mean, the, no, the dude on the left, is, your left is the Democrat with the glasses. The two on the right seem like the Republicans. The one in the middle is a White House reporter, I think. And the other one on the end, so he's the an economist. And I think the guy on the left is a Democratic strategist. But this is the part where we get we get going here. Because, number one, black women, pay attention to this chick right here and do the opposite of what she's doing. Because this is where the part where you're tired of getting stereotyped. Women like her stereotype you. Don't, let it get, don't get it twisted. You're not getting stereotyped for free. This is this is this chick right here. You'll see what I mean, and I'll talk about. It, but she stereotypes you. The guy on the right, whew, he's a trip. He 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 just he got he got he got he got he got problems. I mean, he's a successful Republican. Give him credit, but he got he got problems. The guy on the left is the guy who was the most level-headed of them all. So let's go in and see what they have to say. 90 million white people, you're going to sit here and say that if you a black person, black a white right. person oh, get married, oh. a black person, a white person get married, one can't understand the other person's struggle. You've seen, it's not you've about seen Tim Wise, right? You've seen it's Reverend Wallace. You've seen white people who understand racism Sist very well. That doesn't the mean they're going to do anything the other about thing it. That is obviously well, true well. is they understand racism when you see things like the murder of Medgar Evers, like the murder and, of Martin Luther King. They understand and, racism And what fine. did they do they about it? They understand us gaining just fine, and that's why murder happened. Based right? on what? So the idea that somehow a white person can't understand our struggle? No I could way. care less what they understand. I'm no asking way. you what have they done systematically he already to told improve you that. the opportunities he of white folks. He did not tell oh, me yes, that. Oh, yes, you did tell me that. He did not that. tell me that. You're going to tell me that guys like Tim Wise and Reverend Wallace don't understand what race in America? What about Tim Wise? They don't understand race he in America? He articulates they don't racism, so what has he done? There are no white people that understand race in America. There's, there's no not a white, white person in America. There's no white people understand race in America. There's not a white person. Them going to there's not a white person in America who has ever worked to systematically eliminate the white privilege that they benefit from vis-a-vis -vis your oppression. You, you, you are know, lying. You know, you know 190 so, million so, people in America. Eugene. So, uh, so, so, oh, 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 we're not going to go there. We're not. I, I have called me a liar, and you're a cool. Well, it's a fact that watch you're lying. You it's a fact that you're lying. It's a fact that you're lying. I understand you. To say that, to say that, to say that, to say that. No, everybody, one second. Several things I don't allow. I don't allow the N-word. I don't allow coon. We can talk to one another and disagree, but I do not use racial epithets against and black that's people. that's fine, but he called no, me no, a liar. No, 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 so I, no, no, no. Ra ra racial epithets will not be used on this show. And that's fine. By anybody. But how we talk no, no, to each but other needs to be You can say whatever you want, but no racial epithets will be used on this show about black people to black people. Now, as far as that little segment, what would Martin, it was a fault. Let me explain why. First of all, let me go back before before he interluded, interceded, and he, he messed up. The chick would not the chick wasn't giving any good examples. She gave Tim Wise. First of all, she was wrong. Rowan didn't talk about any white people relating to the racism. And it has and what they're talking about has nothing to do with white people. What you see is she interjected white people into the conversation. Why people were? Why is it every five minutes that you have a, a a black person talks about like trying to improve the community? You have like a black sister talking about, or a, or a, or a brother talking about. Well, what about the white man? Look, look. Let me. Hey, FYI, the white man doesn't care about you all like that. He knows you're a non-threat. That's why you don't do anything. He doesn't care about you like that. The fact of the matter is, she could have came at him a little bit better. Uh, what she did, she should have said, she should have said, well, how, how's that sound insensitive? She could have came with the American perspective. She, the way she came was just ignorant. And as far as the dude that he called him a liar, that's when Roland should have stopped it. 
He shouldn't have let him wait until he got out of hand. He shouldn't have chastised Dr. Johnson. He should have, whenever dude called him a liar, he should, that's when he should have said, hey, 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 let's, let's calm down, this and that. But no, he let he let it go, and he got what he deserved. And my, my, me, myself, I thought the dude was the coon myself, you know. I thought I was cooning on a Sunday afternoon. You know, so, so as far as rolling, that was Roland's fault. So let's get back to the... Let's get back to these three, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. Eugene, your question. So, from your paradigm, from your perspective, civil rights act isn't an act of, of white folk stepping up on behalf of black folk. Current criminal justice reform legislation movement isn't a current act of white folk stepping up on behalf of black folk. Folk that funded the civil rights movement in the, in the 1560s isn't an act of white folk stepping up on behalf of black folk. I'm sorry, as an American, because I define myself as an American, sure a, an African American. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I live in a country that moves forward together. And I say that as a Republican. We move mm -hmm. forward together. Yes, we have individual struggle. Yes, we have struggle. Yes, about we have yes, no no no. Yes, we have we have we have systematic we have systematic okay, 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 finish it. Yeah. Finish it fifteen seconds and answer. we have systematic struggles and together as a country moving forward to defeat those struggles. Really? So, based on what you said, I want you to give me examples of white folk, not individuals, but systematically. Why can't they be individuals? Excuse me. Why can't they be excuse individuals? Me. One second, one second. I know you can't wait. One, one second, second answer. But one finish. second answer. Can I finish? Go, go. Okay, I'm going. Okay? You cannot name anything systematically done ever in this country by white people to equal the playing field for black folks. The Civil Rights Act, Congress literally sits behind us. The Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act. Are you aware? Most of them. Are you aware? Most of them. White people are proud of you, son. Scott Bolden. Real quick. I, I think the, the terminology and the narrative being used is a little misleading, not from you, but from this dialogue right here. Okay. Um, you know, it's one thing to sympathize with the struggle, it's another one to be, to empathize with the struggle, very different. When you talk about marriage being a political choice, and that one of the things, arguments that you made that I tend to agree with is that, that a, if you don't marry a black woman, then she can never support and comfort and value your day-to-day -day struggle as a black man. Uh, that being said, uh, I do think that the, the level of the rhetoric that you use in regard to your Pan-Africanism uh, is, um, is, is difficult for many of us, quote, in the mainstream to get our arms around. But this issue about black men and white women in the civil rights struggle is not a new discussion. My mother was a civil rights activist in mm -hmm. Chicago, and she would often uh, complain privately that, one, you can't sleep black, you can't sleep white and talk black, Thank if you, you will. And Thank that's you. always been in the American struggle, American, African-American struggle with ourselves. Yes, the other thing is that we struggle with our own psychology about okay. self-love and okay. otherwise. <laughs> and if we can get our arms around that, that does make sense. Okay. But you would have to say that you know and, 190 and, million and, people. But you're being too dictatorial. One second. You would have to claim that. You would have to claim that. No, go ahead. Respond. Respond. Go ahead. And I agree with, 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 with my brother's Scott. comments. Mm -hmm. Brother Scott, he brought up the Civil Rights Bill, but what he did not talk about in relation to the Civil Rights Bill is there were two words included in that bill that ultimately served to take away from black people what that bill was intended to deliver. They added gender and they added sexual orientation. And as a result of that, white women and homosexuals have been able to strip black America from the intended gains of the Civil Rights Act. So there was still racism in that bill, if you will study that history. So, Umar, your question was, did anyone, has anyone black ever systematically done I mean, has no. anyone white ever systematically Not done anything? Systematically, systematically. White America. So LBJ, every... LBJ. I want you that's to get... the government. No, I don't think you that's heard the question. That's a systematic move. No, you didn't hear the question. I, what I has no you did not no yeah, you I didn't did. yeah, you're did. so quick to defend white <laughs> yeah, folks that you're not listening no, I'm not trying to I defend white folks 45 seconds so reset the question and give the answer okay. I got 45 right, seconds let's get an answer the question was mm -hmm. what has white america done right not individuals <laughs> systematically not individuals. cannot you Why won't even let me finish yeah, because let's you... are that in love with white folks, you, you don't even let me finish. Point on finish, finish, literally, three times. 20 seconds. Three times. <laughs> there is no bigger no. system than the 20 US seconds, I'll finish. No, and then 20 seconds, I would say that the panel that you have here, <laughs> who are extremely intelligent, do mm. not represent the everyday black man and woman struggles, and then because of that, they can articulate. And you represent 43 million people right, in this country? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Don't think so. Don't think days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my. Now, I let that play out a little longer. I wanted that because I wanted to make a point in that whole in, the, in that last clip. That's why I let that go because 
I was going to intercede, but it got to the point where it was getting interesting. Now, I didn't want to hit, when they hit the crescendo, I didn't want to stop it. And then you guys be like, oh, man, what the hell did you do? You know what I mean? I want you guys to feel that whole that whole thing. What happened was the brother on the left, like I explained to you, the brother on the left understood. But like he said, there's not a lot of people in the mainstream that talk like that's Dr. Johnson talks. So this is why he, he, he even said himself. His, his grandmother said it back in the day. You can't sleep white and talk black. So it's not like black people aren't understanding this. It's a matter of most of them getting out there and actually actually doing something about it. And the sister in the middle, what can I say? She, 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 she fits the stereotype black woman that they make fun of on social media. Ladies, you got to get this shit together. I, I, I don't like cussing, but, but it, it, it's, it's, to me, it's just a shame that you got up, she got up on here, and she, as my grandmother said, she showed her ass out. She couldn't, she wouldn't shut up for nothing. Even the two guys, even the guy that was against Dr. Umar was trying to get her to shut up. That's why you guys got the reputation you have on social media, because women like her won't shut the hell up. And that's why Dr. Umar played her like a fool. I mean, she looks stupid. You guys may not think so, but at the end of the day, you always play that you don't care stuff. Sooner or later, you have to care. Like, and the brother on the right, he just, he was just all wishy-washy. Now, let me bring up the two examples they used. They used the voting, the Civil Rights Voting Act. If you watch many of my videos, I told you what happened there. I told you the stuff, people, uh, parts got struck down in, in, the, in the Supreme Court and how black people are going to be affected by it. And, and then as far as what old girl said with LBJ's Great Society, you mean to tell me the start of the downfall of the black family? She's going to use that as a as a as a high point for us. And you people aren't paying attention to this. I'm convinced a lot of black people do not pay attention, and I agree with a lot of a lot of black scholars. You don't pay attention. She sat there and used LBJ's. You know LBJ's famous quote was, and this is from his own advisors. He said after he signed that, he's going to have niggers vote Democratic for uh, thousands or two hundred years. This isn't myself talking. This is what, you know, this is what his advisors said he said. So they're bringing up stuff that, like, if you pay attention, you should be mad about this. But then again, if you paid attention, you'd be more aware. And this is why this video has come out. Now, I hope you, hope you really thought about this video. I wanted to break down, I wanted to break down the points and what they do to you. And what, how they try to portray us as. So, that being said, I do thank you for watching the video, and I just want to give a breakdown of the video. I know it's going to be a rather long video, so I appreciate you watching it, and thank you. Peace.